Good morning, afternoon, and evening, folks. Welcome to CSS Nation. My name is Harry Mullen and my co-host, Purnell Husband. How you doing, Purnell? I'm doing very well, Harry. How are you? Outstanding. Outstanding indeed. <laughs> okay. So before we get started with today's show, just wanted to remind everyone that you can catch us on our YouTube page, CSS Nation. Actually, correction there, Central Sterilization Solutions. And be sure to uh, like the show if you like it and subscribe. You can also find us on your favorite podcast, whether it's iTunes and such. All right. So today... Purnell and I were thinking about uh, some topics that we wanted to do for a new show and came across one that, you know, we see people talking about online. We seeing different articles and stuff. And so we thought we'd go ahead and talk about it here. And what that is, is this is directed towards the technicians, sterile processing technicians out there in the field that you have aspirations, that you want to make it into a higher position, whether it's a supervisor, educator, system manager, or manager. And so the question for today is, how can technicians advance into management, whatever level that they want to go in? What say you, Purnell? Yeah, I think, you know, there's a lot of uh, motivated people out there working in central uh, services. Many of them are tomorrow's supervisors, managers, and educators. And I'm sure, uh, because we uh, see the messages and the chats, um, that people are thinking about this. And yeah, this is very timely. Um, I think it's about time um, that we talked a little bit about how to make that transition from being a line technician, coming in, doing your job, getting it done, to actually being in charge or being on the management team. Let's do it. Absolutely. So, you know, that so that brings a question that I have for you, Purnell. So what what would you say the uh, the first step is or what should people be thinking about, whether it's their abilities? Um, so what is the first step in, in making that transition? Well, Definitely, um, you want to really know that this transition going into management is something that you actually really want to do. Um, obviously, it's not a decision that anybody's going to take lightly. So, you know, we always suggest give it some serious thought, you know, jot down the pros and cons. What I would say, Harry, um, to answer your question, I think confidence is key. You have to believe that you're ready for this transition, that you're a leader, and that you're going to do a good job. Um, I would say, number one, believe in yourself. Have some confidence because it's going to take that um, to be a good manager. Exactly. Um I agree with you. Believe that you are already a leader. Uh, think about it, as you said before that. Um, one of the things, you know, I've told staff members, you know, that wanted to transition to, let's say, a lead position or to a supervisor position is that be that position before you get that position. In other words, start practicing, uh, you know, what it is that you want to become. So if you want to be a leader, you have to start acting like a leader. And, you know, you really can't, people can't say that they've never functioned in a leadership role or, or capacity in their life because, you know, people step up to the plate all the time. And so we really need to uh, look at our uh, current experiences and and what we've been doing. What What is it that we have been doing uh, to show our senior leaders that we are capable of taking on this role. And, and that the answer to that is start doing the role. In other words, be that leader to your coworkers, be that resource to help one another uh, in order to uh, be able to take uh, on that responsibility. Um, you know, in our industry, we talk about empowerment all the mm -hmm. time. 
And uh, I remember actually not too long ago, I was teaching a class on, uh, you know, process improvements and what does it take. And part of that was the uh, the key was empowerment. And, you know, how they said that we're frontline managers used to make the decisions every day when now it's frontline staff are making those decisions every day to help uh, quality in the department. So, but I also told the students that, you know, you can't necessarily wait for management to give you that power. You have to feel empowered. Uh, and I'm not saying that you have to necessarily rip it out of their hands and demand it, but, you know, act like a leader. Absolutely. Yes. I think, again, to add to that, the confidence um, and taking on the role of what you want to become, you want to start building a reputation as a problem solver, mm -hmm. as a part of this. Uh, because not only are you projecting confidence when an issue comes up, you want to provide a solution. You want to be in the mix, trying to be helpful and trying to resolve issues that come up. So you want to start building a reputation as someone who is positive and someone who is, um, you know, a problem solver, someone who is going to bring some solutions to the table. So your confidence, you, you, you're developing this reputation as a problem solver, as someone who's always willing to help. These are going to go, these things are going to go uh, a long way in helping you become um, the leader that you aspire to be. True, true. And I think another uh, item people should be thinking about and practicing is uh, having better communication skills. You know, so you have to be <laughs> able to communicate effectively uh, to your coworkers, to your peers, uh, to senior leadership, and uh, to uh, individuals that eventually are going to report to you or if they do report to you. So I think, uh, you know, communication, as we've said in the past on other topics, uh, communication is key. You know, so um, start, you know, reading, develop your vocabulary so that you can speak intelligently and know what it is that you're talking about. Know the jargon in the field. So whether it's knowing the acronyms in the field, you know, knowing uh, not just the medical terms, but things like, uh, you know, TQI, total quality improvement. CQI, continuous quality improvement. You know, if you're able to talk the talk and and then learn what that, you know, the, it actually takes to do that as well. In other words, you know, walk the talk as well. You got to be able to walk it and, and talk it. So definitely excellent communication skills. A absolutely. And like Harry said, excellent communication skills. No question. As a leader, as someone aspiring to become a leader, you also have to keep in mind and remember that communication works, works both ways. You want to develop very good active listening skills. You want to make sure that when you're having a conversation with staff or anyone for that matter, that you're completely engaged and you want the other person that you're having this conversation with to really know and feel like you're listening to them, like you're hearing them. So just remember, excellent communication skills. Not only do you want to increase your vocabulary, learn and understand the jargon and use it properly, but you also want to be an excellent listener. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's a tough one for me, Purnell. You know, I like it <laughs> so much that sometimes it's like, uh, I forget to listen, you know, and it's, it's funny because, you know, my mother always said that, uh, you know, God gave you two ears and one mouth. One so you, mouth, right? <laughs> so you should be trying to listen twice as hard as you are talking. That's, and, a, that's uh, an unfortunately, old school saying. 
<laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I think mo most of the time when my wife, my not my wife, my mother was saying that, uh, I was too busy talking over her, trying to talk over her, and I didn't really hear it. You know, didn't hear a thing she said. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, another oh. one. Uh, you know, education, I think is is a big one. You know, so. Tell somebody what you know what you think they would have to do uh, educational wise. What are the steps that they should be looking at taking for now? Yeah. So you wanna you're an aspiring manager, supervisor, educator. You wanna make that transition. As far as education, we're always learning when it comes to education, more is good not less is good, more is good. Mm -hmm. Of course, you wanna have those advanced certifications. You want people to have confidence that you're prepared for this transition and to go into management. That means working on a degree or having a degree, um, but it definitely means having the ISHM certifications under your belt. We believe that managers are highly motivated and they need to lead by example. Never stop learning, keep reading, get those advanced certification. And if you don't have a degree, you need to start working on some kind of degree. Well, you know, it goes back to, uh, I remember you telling me that uh, as far as the education part is definitely by getting your certifications, you're basically, you're starting to learn and know your craft. All right. So, uh, and as you said it, subject matter expert, uh, they're really not going to look at you, senior leadership or any hospitals that you start to apply to, if you don't have uh your certifications you know we're assuming that th at this point you all have your crcst or the uh cpspd or you know mm -hmm. the one from the other association i'm i'm not as familiar with the initials and stuff but but let's say you have your crcst um and that's great and that is definitely a start uh from his my history I didn't get my first supervisor job until I got my CRCST. I didn't have anything else. I didn't have advanced certifications and I didn't have my degree at the time. But uh, having that CRCST at least allowed, you know, recruiters to take note of my experience and to start thinking me of a subject matter expert that I knew what I was talking about 20 years prior when I tried to make it into management, didn't have those initials. And so they just passed me on. It's like, it doesn't matter that you have 20 years experience, you know? Absolutely. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, what do you have that shows that you are capable of doing this? And again, and so it's continuously educating yourself, get your advanced certifications. Now I got my advanced certifications and it helped me to advance uh, even higher up. I have, you know, eventually we got our, uh, our, uh, degrees, you know, and, uh, it's, it's invaluable. It's just absolutely, absolutely invaluable. But, uh, but if you're not going to take your education serious and know, uh, your craft and to know that you are a subject matter expert, then who else is going to take you serious if you don't? Absolutely. Absolutely, Harry. That That is definitely spot on. Um, education is the key, becoming a subject matter expert, and you get there by working on those certifications. You expand your knowledge by bringing a degree to the table. And again, remember, we're talking to CSS Nation, and we want all of you to be successful and whatever aspirations you may have. So we're gonna give you good solid advice and we're not gonna charge that much. Um, 
<laughs> hey, speaking of uh, charging or something like that, uh, Purnell, I think right now is a good time for a commercial. So let's go ahead, uh, folks. We're going to be right back after this short commercial break. The job market right now is... I feel much better than it was even when I went in. As the result of the COVID pandemic that we've had, our profession has been even under more spotlight and given even more of an opportunity. We're infection control, we're infection preventionists, and breaking the chain of infection and destroying viruses is our job, and it's what we're trained to do as professionals. That field is going to keep growing and growing. The sterile processing field is a great way to come into the hospital setting. Again, you're coming right into the operating room. Welcome back to the show, folks. And just a reminder, uh, this is CSS Nation. And again, my name is Harry Mullen, my co-host, uh, Purnell Husband. And today we're talking about how you as a technician can advance into management. And we're going to go ahead and pick up uh, where we left off. So, Purnell, uh, so what is another way of getting the education that uh, people uh, might need? I mean, I know there's 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 education. You go to seminars, you go to you know, get your certifications and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's got to be an easier way of learning, uh, you know, maybe from somebody else you know, from their experiences and stuff like that. So, sure. you know, yeah. what would you say would be a good way for people to develop that education and, and experience? Well, I would say if, if you aspire to be a manager, then you want to hang out with managers. You want to start cultivating relationships with people who are in positions that you want to be in, whether it be an educator, whether it be a manager, whether it be a lead, you want to start asking questions. And even if you may not be asking all of the right questions, once someone knows that you're motivated and that you're serious and you want to make this transition at, at, at some point, you're going to get help because managers, supervisors are taught to reach that handout and help folks who want to be in positions similar to theirs. It's just something that we do. So I would say, we would say, if you wanna be a manager, whatever position you're aspiring to, start having conversations with those people, start picking their brains, start developing a network of people that you can call upon um, to get that knowledge. So that's another way, Harry, um, I think um, we can educate ourselves by talking to people um, that has that have done the job, that's done the job. We'll fix this in the editing process. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, and uh, we had a little caption on the bottom there, you know, in... in you know, not only hanging out with managers, but part of that was, uh, again, to, you know, is to keep learning. So you're going to learn by, you know, expanding your network, you know, with those managers. If you know, so go to the managers, you know, and ask questions, let them know what you're aspiring to. Um, if, uh, you know, if, you pick their brains and and they don't seem to have anything else uh, to share with you. Um, you know, seek out managers uh, at other locations so you can go to the local seminars. Now I know that's been kind of tough this past year with COVID mm -hmm. and everything, but I know one of the ways that I was able to keep learning is that uh, building my network. In other words, and, you know, meeting other individuals uh, that had the experience that I could talk to and learn from. And I would ask them, you know, 
uh, maybe the first time you talk to them is kind of hard to just broach them. They don't seem to know you. And, you know, you immediately start hitting them up. That may not be the best approach, but at least the first time you see them at uh, one of these local seminars is that you introduce yourselves and, uh, and, and talk to them and, and develop a friendship. And then the next time uh, you see them, because you've already learned who they are, what they do, you know, uh, the second time you see them, you can say, you know, I, uh, I remember in our conversations, you said that you were a manager at this facility and stuff. So, you know, I'm looking to advance into management and someday. And so I was wondering if uh, periodically, you know, if I could get your number so I could pick your brain and stuff. So you have to start building your network is, uh, you know, so that way, and it's not just of other managers. You need to build a network for individuals that are in the industry, let's say sterilization companies, uh, vendors, uh, these other subject matter experts that when you come across the day-to-day -day issues in management, that whether it's equipment problems and stuff like that, you have your sphere of influence or you have your network that you can go to to be able to get the answers and stuff. So that way you become more valuable to senior leadership. And again, going back to becoming a subject matter expert, not that you know all the answers, but you know where to find the answer. That's right. And that brings me to uh, just piggybacking on what Harry just said, resources. Um, people are definitely resources, but you also want to start cultivating and accumulating resources that are going to help you, whether it be PDFs from websites that you need to start brushing up on, um, you know, whether it's manuals or books, you know, resources are going to be, educational resources are going to be very important for you um, on this journey as well. Outstanding. And you know what? I'm going back to some of my notes right now. I'm looking down here uh, at my notes. And uh, one of the things I remember you talking about is follow through. And yeah, I found that interesting. And I wanted to, uh, I wanted you to talk a little bit more about follow through and, and what you meant by that. Yeah. So I talked a little bit earlier about developing um, a reputation. People who want to transition into management, um, it's not a spontaneous decision. It's probably something that they have been thinking about for some time. Um, so you really want to make sure that um, you start thinking about the kind of reputation that you want to have. And you can start building that. And the way you do that is by observing good habits. Somebody sends you an email, you want to respond in an appropriate amount of time. Um, if, if, if there's an issue, you always want to be known as someone that is going to follow through. You don't want loose ends out there and you don't want to be associated with that type of a reputation. Follow through simply means getting the job done. If there's an issue that comes up that needs to be resolved, it's resolved once the issue is resolved. So your actions and what you do to follow up and to follow through is going to follow you no matter where you go. So again, you want to develop good habits, getting back to people, returning phone calls. Um, and if there's an assignment or task that you've been given, you definitely want to follow it all the way through until um, you complete it. That's the kind of reputation that you need to be developing. 
because as a manager, you're going to have, or supervisor or an educator, mm -hmm. you're gonna have a lot on your plate. And a lot of those things are gonna require your action to resolve. And it only gets resolved with your follow through. So we believe that having that kind of attitude, I need to get things done, I need to finish this, check it off the list, cross it out. You're on your way. Yeah. You know, another thing that I believe you had uh, discussed um, previously uh, when we talked is how you treat the staff. So you're wanting to be a manager or you are just became a manager. You know, what, what are the some of the traits you know, when it comes to dealing with staff that, uh, you know, you need to start practicing now before you get into management when it comes to dealing with staff. Yeah. So if you're an aspiring manager, I mean, you know, our approach, my approach is to always respect people who report to you. Simple stuff. Treat people the way you want to be treated as a manager you're going to have to be fair and you're going to have to be fair consistently but again you want to make people who work for you feel good about working for you yeah and usually if you communicate with people like you'd want to be communicated with that's a really, really good place to start. And I would say the staff is the backbone of the department, right? Yeah. Um, without those people doing their jobs, you don't have a job. So people should be at the top of your priority list. And they need to know that they're at the top of your priority list. Got to take care of your people. Part of that is also when you make it, help others to make it as well. Bingo. You know, so Reach just back. to, just to uh, recap. So again, you know, we've been talking about uh, as technicians, if you're wanting to advance into higher leadership roles, you know, some of the stuff that you need to do. And so, you know, just to recap uh, some of those items, uh, in no particular order. I know the last thing you did <clears throat> talked about is, you know, supporting your people, treating them how you want to be treated, you know, take good care of your staff, you know, and uh, you need to, and it takes practice, mm -hmm. you know, the another one, Absolutely. Is the, the follow through, uh, making sure that you're doing what it is that you need to do, develop that reputation of being able to get the job done. You know, we talked a little bit about uh, excellent communication skills, you know, as well as uh, education, becoming that subject matter expert uh, and being able to show that is getting your advanced certifications, uh, possibly getting a, uh, an advanced degree like your, like your bachelor's or master's and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so these are just, you know, again, some of the uh, things that we talked about. Oh, and again, we started off with believe in yourself. You confidence. need to make sure that you have the confidence that and know that you're already a leader. You know, if you don't believe it, nobody else is going to believe it. That's so right. You need to work on that. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to add there um, on this topic there, Pernell? You know, the only thing I would say, Harry, is that, um, you know, we work um, in a wonderful industry. Um, it's complex. Lots of moving parts, lots of people. Um, and these departments, these people um, need good, credible leadership. Um, leadership that understands them, leadership that understands how hard they work, leadership that rewards them and builds them up. And I would say if any of you are out there thinking about transitioning into management and central service, um, more power to you because our industry 
um, needs good, strong, wonderful leaders who are going to advocate for the great people who work in this field. Exactly. And, you know, that that leadership does not, you know, because some people are like, well, I don't want to be the manager of the department or assistant manager. And so there's many different leadership roles that you can take in this right. industry and still be part of the management team. You know, you, the very the very first step is maybe becoming a lead technician. Mm -hmm. uh, we you know, we talked about uh, becoming a supervisor. There's educator, there's clinical coordinators where you specialize in a particular service area for the mm -hmm. OR. Um, assistant manager, manager, director, the sky's the limit as to what it is that you want to accomplish. And trust me, the only one who's going to hold you back in today's society is going to be you, you know, and so if you can't believe you and see yourself in the position, nobody else will. It's not going to happen. So, so again, going back, believe in yourself, you know, <clears throat> know that you can be a leader and stuff. So I wanted to say, you know, thank you everybody for tuning in, uh, in this episode of CSS nation with Pernell and I, um, you know, we really enjoy doing these shows for you. And with that, um, my final question to you is, uh, Pernell, is do you have anything else to share? We'll be back. <laughs>